My name is Siobhan Arline Bradley, and I am the Senior Director of Health Programs for the National Office of the NAACP. We are excited that you have decided to join us this afternoon for a very, very important conversation. We're going to really, first of all, thank NAACP Connect for bringing us all together to have a conversation about health care, the health insurance marketplace, what it means to me and what it means to you. We really want to provide some important information for those that are hanging out with us today. Uh, we want to break down the Affordable Care Act, give you some updates about deadlines and talk about what's available and how this Affordable Care Act will help underserved communities. We have two very, very special guests to me. Uh, I know them both very well. I'm excited to share the Hangout screen with them today. First, we have the youngest ever chair of the board of the NAACP, Rosalind M. Brock. She is the national chairman of the board of directors of the NAACP uh, and is also an advocate for health care uh, in her everyday work. And of course, we also have one of our brightest stars, the leader of the youth and college division, as well as young adults, Mr. Sammy Dow, uh, director of the NAACP's youth and college division, both joining us. Uh, Chairman Brock and Sammy, welcome to the Hangout. Thank you, Siobhan. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So we're going to start with our chairman uh, because we get a chance to have these conversations a lot. But I think, uh, Madam Chair, that we really want to talk to the Hangout crew today. Why is the NAACP even interested, or should I say involved, in conversations about the Affordable Care Act and with some specifics around the health insurance marketplace. What are some of your thoughts about why the NAACP is even at that table? Well, Siobhan, let me just start by giving a little history about the NAACP. Okay. Uh, we've been concerned about health care uh, in America since, since the 1930s. Uh, our national board of directors, our chairman was Dr. Montague Cobb. Um, in the 1930s, when we were thinking about the Hill Burton Act, and how hospitals uh, were, had an issue of restraint of trade for African Americans physicians uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, at Howard University hospitals and other uh, hospitals across the nation. And so since that time, in the 1960s, with uh, Social Security and, and Medicaid and Medicare, uh, we've been actively engaged in legislation in this area. But most recently, in 2011, the association developed a five-year strategic plan, and we call it our 21st century game changers. And healthcare is a major tenant uh, in that uh, strategy. Uh, there are five foci. One is education, uh, healthcare, economic empowerment, criminal justice, and civic engagement. Um, and so we're concerned about the health uh, of this nation, and we want to ensure that every American has access, equal access to affordable and accessible health care. And we want to make sure that it's high quality health care and that there are no racially disparate outcomes uh, because of their entry into the health care system. And health care marketplaces are really a good way for us to ensure that equity on the battlefield for equal access to health. And so you gave us an awesome lesson about the process and the history because I think many people don't understand. That's over 80 years that you talked about of healthcare advocacy. Uh, and we're not new to that. this game. Right. We, right. Um, we're here. not new to this conversation. Right. We've been at, we've been here before. Right. And it's great for the for the hangout members to get a chance to hear that that this is not brand new uh, to all of us that are online together. The NAACP has been doing this work for years. And one of the things that's interesting about this is that many people have the misconception that this is for only those that are seniors and those that are older. Uh, so this helps me transition to the next question. And this is for our youth and college director. So Sammy, I've got to ask you this uh, because, you know, Madam Chair and myself, we, we're, we're claiming young. And so we're going to also ask you uh, to, to talk to us about some <laughs> of the, the young people that may think, you know what? Health care, health insurance, I don't even need it. But talk to us. I mean, why is it even important that young people sign up and even get coverage? I mean, what, what does that mean for young people for health care? 
So oftentimes, young people, we feel invincible. You know, we feel strong, we're healthy now, but we never know when we'll get sick. We never know when we'll face injury. And so it's really important that young people take advantage of this opportunity to get insured because if you're uninsured and let's say you happen to reach a point in your life where you have a, med a medical issue or an injury, you'll have to pay the full cost of treating that illness or injury out of pocket. Right. And even common illnesses and injuries like a broken bone can cost several hundred to several thousands of dollars to treat without insurance. And let's also, for young people, let's talk about the economic impact of that. When you have large medical bills, if you default on those, those, those that's bankruptcy debt that you can't charge off. That's stuff that's appearing on young folks' credit. And so we also know that getting young people covered, getting young people access to quality health insurance also helps secure their financial stability years down the road. Yeah. So if they get health insurance now, they have access to pre preventative care at no additional cost, which not only treats issues as they arise, but also gives young people the power to really do some preventative health care and some preventative maintenance, which we know in our community is something that we're still working to get folks to take seriously. So let's talk a little bit about this preventive services. Uh, Madam Chair, let's, you and I and Sammy have this conversation. I want to list a couple that I think that everyone should know about, and please feel free to comment. So under preventive services, we're looking at immunizations. We're looking at well woman visits. And for the ladies on the line, those are the mammograms and pap smears that are uh, actually being required and requested that patients stay in compliance with contraception depression screenings, HIV and STI, or sexually transmitted uh, disease screenings, as well as counseling. So those are some of the, the, the big preventive issues. But there's another part that you brought up, Sammy, that's about the funding. Um, and I want to make sure we get this out to the listeners. And I'm reading this. Starting in 2014, you are required to have health insurance or pay a penalty. Uh, the penalty will start off relatively low. When we say penalty, that means if you have not taken advantage of the marketplace, which every state requires a marketplace, whether the federal government runs it or your state runs it, uh, there will be a penalty as low as $95 or 1% of your annual income. So for those of you that have jobs um, and you're not taking advantage of either your current employer's coverage or you do not take advantage of the marketplace, there is a penalty. Uh, and then it will actually uh, you know, look at steadily, steadily increase to the upwards of $695 or 2.5% of your income in 2016. Why are we telling you this? We're sharing this information with you because we want young adults, young working professionals to understand that you are at risk. So any more conversations about preventive screenings that you can think about, I'll turn it over either to the chairman or to Sammy. Any thoughts? I really you know, Siobhan, go ahead, Sammy. Go ahead, Madam Chair, ahead, Madam Chair um, first, and then Sammy. You know, health is wealth in our community. Uh, December 1st was World AIDS Day, yeah. um, and when we think about HIV and AIDS in our community, uh, if the black community were its own country, we would rank 16th in the world for HIV and AIDS. I mean, yeah. that's critical. Um, I'm in uh, southwest Baltimore uh, working for a Catholic health care system in an urban area. So many of those who we see coming through our emergency department are in need of preventative health services. Right. Uh, think they wouldn't be there if, it, if they had quality and accessible health care and primary health care from the beginning and preventive health care. And so it is sorely needed in our community and we need to do more about getting the word out, one, about prevention and um, about uh, healthy lifestyles and healthy behaviors, but also about this penalty because oh, yeah. just we can't say we don't know uh, it is the law of the land, and we need to make sure that we enroll in a health care marketplace to get quality health care. Okay. Sam, will you jump in? And I also think I was, as I was preparing for the Hangout, I was thinking, you know, as we talk about this health care issue, what are we really talking about here? And we're really talking about justice. We're really talking about economic security for young people and communities. We're really So as we look at, we see in the country, there's a, a conversation now happening about raising the minimum wage. 
Well, we also know that there are families who may be earning a living wage, a living wage, but because they haven't had access to preventative health care and quality health insurance, they're spending a large portion of their family income taking care of medical expenses and medical bills that really can be covered under qual a quality health insurance plan. And so young people may, may not really at this point in our lives may not really value a quality health insurance plan, but it's right. so critical. And if anybody's ever gone to the ER and you've gotten that bill after you've been, <laughs> you know that a quality health insurance plan is crucial. And so it isn't necessarily about the money that young people make in a, a dollar figure salary annually. We really have to take into account if we're not healthy, if we're not well, what funding, what resources will we have to invest in fixing a problem on the back end because we weren't diligent, we didn't take advantage of the opportunities to get covered and get insured when it was made available to us. This is great. And if you're just tuning in, if you're just tuning in and watching our discussion, this is the NAACP Connect facilitated Google chat. We're talking about health care. We're talking about health care with the youngest ever chairman of the board of directors for the NAACP, Roslyn Brock, and the director, the national director of the youth and college division of the NAACP, Sammy Dow. Uh, this is so important. Uh, we want you to know, for those that are listening, that we actually have set up our mobile phone lines. If you text the letters A C A. That's Affordable Care Act. A C A. If you text those letters to this number, six two 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 seven, you will get updates about what's going on with the ACA. That's the letters A C A to six two 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 seven. What's so important about that is we'll be able to give you some mobile uploads and mobile updates uh, from our listserv and keep you informed as listeners. You're tuning in to the Health Insurance Marketplace Google Hangout. And my next question is for Chairman Brock. Now, I tell you, if you're anybody like the average American, you are seeing constant television stories and dates and anger just thrown all over the place. So we want to set the record straight with you today. So you can help us as the expert today. We have things that have been floating around regarding sign-up. You've been hearing everything about you know, what's going on with the website, but we're not even here to debate that. We want to know the truth about the dates. What should listeners be paying attention to? Because many have been hearing so many different stories. So we're going to set the record straight on NAACP Connect today. What should we be prepared for? What dates are out there? What is the truth? First of all, the, the first date has already passed. It's October the 1st. Open enrollment began on October the 1st. So that's already done. The, the, the doors have been opened. The opportunity is available for us. But December 23rd, in about two weeks, it's, it's a cutoff to receive coverage by January the 1st, 2014. That means that if you want to have coverage okay. for next year, you have to sign up by December the 23rd to make sure that your health care coverages begins January the 1st. Now, at January the 1st, we also have the opportunity to have expanded Medicaid coverage. Mm -hmm. And so it's the health care package, but also <laughs> Medicaid coverage that's extended in those states uh, that have um, provided extended health care because not every state in our nation that's has right. done the for its citizens. The next date that you have to be aware of is March the 31st, 2014. Mm -hmm. Friends, it's over. <laughs> it's really over. March the 31st, 2014, drop dead date. Not really. <laughs> but <laughs> open enrollment closes. That's the window of opportunity from October the 1st to March 31st, 2014, for us to go out, get educated, sign up for this expanded healthcare opportunity in our communities. So let's stay there a minute. And I want to talk about the December 23rd date that you just gave us. And from my understanding, within the last two weeks, that date is actually a new date. It, it was December 15th. That's uh, right. And now, is that correct? Is that correct? It was December 15th. It was December 15th, but the date was moved back because of the slow, uh, the challenges that we've had uh, nationally uh, with okay. the enrollment database. Uh, okay. But now uh, the, uh, those who have designed the system have pushed it back a week, but they have not uh, extended the deadline that's March the 31st, 2014. 
And so in this window of opportunity, we're encouraging everyone, young and old, to go out and find out everything you can about the available uh, health care products that are out there just for you. That's and right. so if you don't need a full stable of health care um, prevention, that's available to you at a price point that you can get. But the beauty of the program is that the basic level of primary care services are already included okay. in this preventive health care package. So that is very helpful. And, and December 23rd, ladies and gentlemen, that is only two days before Christmas, which is right around the corner. So right. what we need you to understand is if you are someone who is working for a company that does not have what we call the basic coverage, uh, you actually have the right to look on the marketplace, whether your state is running running it or whether it is a, a what we call FFM state, the federally funded mandate state. Those opportunities are available to you on healthcare.gov. You can do that. You can contact your state offices to identify when can I and where can I go for coverage. Uh, one thing I want to let everyone know as well, the NAACP, uh, from the health department standpoint, is going to be focusing on seven specific areas to get enrollment done in 2014 as well. So we're going to get healthy for the holidays. We're also going to be pushing it during Black History Month, and we're going to be pushing in March as well for the last call. So we'll be in Atlanta. We'll be in Phoenix. We'll be in Dallas. We'll be in Detroit. We will also be in Philadelphia. We'll be in uh, uh, a number of other cities, northern New Jersey, in Newark, New Jersey, Miami, Florida. So we're going to be east to west in the Midwest. We're going to be doing some sign-up uh, in person. So those dates will be shared on Twitter, on Facebook. Please, please, please know that the NACP is here to connect you to your navigators. Now, Madam Chair, you talked about expanding Medicaid, expanding Medicaid. And, I, and you know, you and Sammy know that there are a lot of young people who are on this chat that may say, what in the world does that have to do with me? Uh, and so I really want to talk a little bit about Medicaid expansion, then we'll go into our next question. Medicaid expansion, ladies and gentlemen, means there may be this person who's in a situation that they made too much money to get support from Medicaid, but did not make enough money to pay, pay for their premiums, their health care premiums. Expanding Medicaid does just that. It helps to expand the number of people that will get access to coverage. And it used to be that Medicaid was only for a certain population. Now, there's something called the working poor in America, which is our NAACP oxymoron. That's one thing we hate to really, to really see. It's something called the working poor. You should never be working and not have access to coverage. And so in 24 states in this country, there have been no's from governors to Medicaid expansion. This is your opportunity as listeners to get involved. Now, Sam, I'm going to ask this question to you. As members of the NAACP advocacy, that comes natural for us. We are advocates all the time. But what do you recommend to people that are interested in health care reform? How do you provide uh, some strategies for them to prepare for March 31st in their communities? What can they do? So I think even as... as as early as preparing for the December 23rd date. So while we're out purchasing Christmas gifts for other folks, we need to make sure we've gotten ourselves some health coverage. And I think that's, that's the great. best gift you can give yourself this holiday season is to make sure that when the ball drops on New Year's Eve, you have some health insurance going into the into 2015. <laughs> but for young folks across the country, we know that young people are really innovative. We love engaging with our peers. We love talking to our peers. We're really encouraging folks. If you're involved in a local NAACP youth council or college chapter or young adult committee, we're encouraging you to work with those in your community. Host a forum in your community. Let's talk about health insurance. Let's help people unpack some of the misinformation that we know that's out there. Let's also help people get away from this conversation about what's happening with the website because we know that there are enrollment activities and enrollment opportunities in your local community. You can go to local libraries, local community centers, local churches. There's also there are also federal federally qualified your community that'll be doing work around getting people enrolled and ready and even more important than that just knock on doors knock on doors in your community and say hey yeah. 
I recently signed up for the healthcare marketplace and I want to check and see do you have health insurance and you had an opportunity to go down to the library and talk with the folks that are there and get registered and some folks will say well child I was watching the news and they told me the website don't work that's all right that's all right we have folks we have folks in your local community we have folks at church we have folks everywhere that are making sure that folks are registered and have an opportunity to take advantage of this information. And so even though the NAACP nationally has a strategy to address this, we really are no stronger than the work that our volunteers do in the field. And so every door you knock on is a life you save by giving them an opportunity and access to the information as it relates to health care. So take advantage again of the opportunities to hold forums in your communities. Educate yourself about the places in your local community where you can register for the marketplace on site there and also yep. spend a few minutes knocking on some doors and making sure your neighbors and your friends know about this as well. Awesome. Now we're going to we're going to transition over to to Chairman Brock here. Uh, we have about 5 more minutes, but I want to give the chairman an opportunity to really give us some closing comments on what you just heard Sammy say, but also bringing it home for us. What do you want the listeners to walk away with? We've done a lot of talking in the last 20 minutes. It's, I can't believe it went that fast. But what do you want the listeners to know, and what should they walk away with? What tools do we have ready for them? And as our chairman, where do you want young people to make things move? You know, I really want to thank Sammy for his comments. It's really about us taking responsibility for our own health, for our own lives, and for our own futures. Mm. Uh, courage must not skip this generation. I say that all the time. And so I'm grateful for the NAACP Connect. I'm grateful for this opportunity that we have at uh, Google Hangout to just share the message about the history of the NAACP, but most importantly about the importance of health in our nation. Mm. We don't, we're just not talking to the old, we're talking to the young, but we want to talk to the uninitiated, those right. who mm. go on social media, who want right. to be hip and want to know what's happening. Well, friends, this is what's happening. This is what's happening right now. Right. Don't let this opportunity pass you by to go out, get educated, and then sign up for health care because you will find that it's the most important decision that you will make to ensure that you have access to affordable, high-quality, preventive health care. It'll extend your life. It'll make you feel better, and it would also improve your community, your nation, your world. That's why we're here at the NAACP. We've got an exciting director and our leader with Siobhan Arline Bradley, who's mobilizing communities, faith communities across this nation. We're grateful to the best national youth and college director in this nation, who is Absolutely. training up a new generation of social justice advocates who understand that don't just talk about it, you got to be about it. And we've got to break the chains of miseducation in our community that says that we're not concerned about health care, about the ability to get health care, not only for ourselves, but for our families and for our children. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you on Google Hangout and on NAACP Connect. The future is calling, and with your help, the NAACP will be there to make sure that you have access to affordable, high-quality, preventive health care. Google Hangout fans, I know you didn't know we had a cool, hip chairman who could say, if you don't talk about it, just be about it. Uh, Sammy, I don't know if you're on top of it, brother. We want to give you some closing remarks time, and then we'll give you some key information, and then we'll let you all go. Sammy? My closing message is simple. Don't buy into the hype of, of the folks who are trying to convince you that this isn't important or who are trying to shift the conversation away from what an amazing opportunity there is. There are folks out there who are trying to control the narrative on this and trying to talk specifically about one website mm -hmm. and the flaws with that website. But we know that this opportunity is major and if it wasn't a major opportunity, if this wasn't a landmark opportunity for young people across this country, specifically young people of color, they wouldn't be trying so hard to stop you from registering. 
So make sure you take advantage of the opportunity to register. I'm sure Siobhan will share with you how you can continue to engage and connect with the NAACP on this issue. You can also always find information about youth and college and the work that we're doing and how we'll partner with the health department on NAACPConnect.org. You can also text YC to 62227 and we'll be sending out information that the health team shares with us as well. Please make sure you do yourself a favor and that as you're preparing to enjoy this holiday season with your family, let's make sure we make our health a priority as well. Wow, what an amazing hangout. I, we got to hang out more often, guys. This was <laughs> awesome. Um, so I have a couple of closing remarks to give you some big time information. We are working. We talked about Medicaid expansion. Sammy and Chairman Brock talked about you getting involved. If you're in the state of Georgia, state of Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Mississippi, or Louisiana, look for the NAACP. We will begin working on our Medicaid expansion plans. Do not think that you do not have a bone in this fight. You do, because you are an advocate. Please text the letters ACA -A to our mobile line, which is 62 227. When there are events that are coming up in your areas, they will be sent out if you join our mobile listserv. We want you to do that. You can find more about Chairman Brock on the Brock Report. Please look it up. You can see in more information about Sammy. If you text YC to 62227 and the work that he's doing, the health department is always here for you. We are excited to have had this opportunity today. We're going to hang out again. I'm, I'm going to sign us up for another hangout. <laughs> I want to thank NAACP Connect. I want to thank our leader, our chairman, Roslyn Brock. I want to thank our youth leader, Sammy Dow. And I want to thank the NAACP Connect family, our whole comms and social media team. We love and appreciate you and all of those that hung out with us today. We love you too. And we care about you and we need you at the table. Join us, NAACP.org. Get your membership. It is the lifeblood of this organization. Without you, we're nothing. God bless.